Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David and in today's video, I would like to talk about this particular plant known as Syndapsus triubi, which is very much similar like the satin photo. So sit back and enjoy the show. I must say the Syndapsus Tirubi Moonlight versus Dark Form, the difference between these two are actually very much on the colorization. When it comes to Moonlight, you will notice that it has very much more on a silver sheens and it has a very strong dark green colorization at the center. I will like to talk about a little bit more on the potting media used here, but however, I'll get more on the details in the later part of this video. When you look at this, this particular one is actually a new shoot coming from the moonlight. Here you notice the colorization here is slightly more pale looking and more in, in the context of a lighter green in comparison to the matured looking moonlight. In a way, you can actually mistaken it for a two different plants planted in the same pot. However, it is actually the younger leaves appearing to be much more brilliant and lighter looking compared to the matured colorization. I must say that it's very much different from the common syndapsis known as satin photo where those are very much more on a rounder shape. Over here is very much oval shape. Now this particular one is actually Syndapsis Truby Dark Form. It appears to be both of them are actually coming from the same cultivar. The only difference here is that when it comes to dark form, it doesn't have any other colors except one main flush colors that appears to be in a singular form. Another characteristic that I actually noticed is that when it comes to dark form, it is actually a slow growing plant. These are one of the things that I noticed when it comes to dark color colored plants especially when the leaves are very much in a black or dark green they are very slow growing when it comes to this kind of uh, epiphytes also another unique feature is that they do appear to be a little bit more like a metallic colorization and also can be confused with another species known as the uh, zz plant here you can see side by side comparison of these two plants and of course you can immediately know what is dark form and moonlight in, in the context of their differences. I must say the care of the plant is very much similar but however they are indeed slow growing, much more slow growing compared to the satin photos. Just a little bit of an introduction concerning this Syndapsis truby plant. This particular one is actually native to the Southeast Asia rainforest, often found in tropical forests, normally be climbing or trailing on the trees or the root, root areas around the trees. In most cases, these foliage are often damaged due to the fact that it is open to weather condition as this can be considered fragile. Unlike other aeroid genus, this particular one can be considered fussy and difficult to cultivate as they are indeed a slow growing plant. I would not recommend this if you are using this as a normal potting media where it can actually get root problems easily. In most cases you will know that the plant is stressed up when you actually see the leaves curled up and also shriveled up due to the stress factor and may not revert back to its healthy looking conditions. Now before I continue with this topic, I would greatly appreciate if you can click like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to support my channel. I would truly hope that you would enjoy my gardening journey here and love to hear your thoughts concerning this particular plant experiences. And also do put in your comment below in what you think and who would like to indulge with in this particular plant care and thoughts concerning them. Now coming to the potting medium, one of the secrets that I actually found is that they do grow very well with spanum moss in comparison with other regular potting medium. Also, I find that they do very well when given a totem pole to climb upon as they seem to grow much more amazingly when it comes to something where they can climb upon. I would say that do take a uh, caution factor here because there was once I have an experience where the root ball did not really secure itself in a way stable hence I immediately just roll over this particular uh, wine around the totem pole where the 
base of the plant is not truly established. So what exactly happened here is that over some time, about one to two weeks time, the plant slowly withered away and this was something which is very much uh, was confusing to me because I thought that the aerial roots were actually good enough for this plant to support itself in a long term basis. Sadly the whole plant withered and died away. I was able to trim and put them back in propagation in water but in most cases only one or two cuttings survives. So in a cautionary note, what I want to mention to you here here is that uh, do take note when it comes to transplanting the plant. Make sure that when it comes to the, the foundation factor where the root ball is, make sure that it has a very strong root base in a way that it is stable and very much anchored uh, just cutting the long wine stem and planting it may not be ensure that the plant able to survive in long term basis in a context i also see on a standard factor when it comes to totem pole i always find that coconut fiber is used as a standard medium over here when it comes to satin photos do ensure that there are a good amount of generous amount of spanner moss being used because i find that spanner moss is the one that really aids the roots to grow and keep the plant healthy now we have covered more on the factor of the Watering medium. Now watering is another main factor which can be very tricky. Too much water and you get a root rot. Too less water and the plant will shrivel and eventually will die. There are some cases where a lot of people actually mention in a sense that only water the plant when it's almost dry medium and that kind of sort. It may bring on a downhill because these plants may require constant moisture factor on the medium meaning that if you're using a spanner moss the spanner moss must be somehow have retained a little bit more wetness on it constantly too much being totally dry may sort of create a kind of a stress on the root ball where especially when it comes to aerial roots and totem pole where the roots start to dry off it may cause stress and the plant may die. You must understand that these are actually rainforest plants and so therefore they are exposed to constant uh, humidity and wetness in a way that is something that need to be stabilized. I would not ex actually would say that they need to be constantly being in a total wet condition because it can cause root problems, or sorry, rot problems. And in this context, it is actually coming to a place where you create a balance between the lighting system together with the air where it is sort of like how you mentioned this is more like a windy effect where the, there is an air movement so the plant is feeling more on a fresh kind of factor where with the air movement together with humidity together with the sunlight so in a way that it has this kind of ambience where it is in a rainforest so in that context watering uh, in a way misting will be the best but also do keep an eye on the potting medium where the the medium is uh, barely moist but not totally dry now when it comes to pests it can be such a menace when especially when it comes to scale insect especially when it fully covers these plants this normally will happen when the plant is not receiving good bright indirect light one of the cases here is that when the plant seems to face some stress it sort of release some kind of pheromone where this pest seems to be attracted to it Somehow I find that when it comes to pests, it is almost like very uniform where if there is a mealybug and scale insect, somehow the culprit is the ants. Do check out for uh, ants infestation or nesting because in most cases these ants do farm upon it and will cause more stress for this kind of factor. Finally, I've come to the end of my video. One of the things that I can explain to you here is that if you are doubtful to grow this particular syndapsus, I would actually recommend that you can try your hands. It will be much more easier ones, especially the photos kind or even the common syndapsus, which is very much uh, more easier and when you're able to practice your hands upon it and are confident that their success rate is good, then get your hands upon this particular syndapsus 
prices as these are quite challenging and expensive when it comes to pricing and its care conditions. These common synapses do have its challenges, however, it can be very rewarding when you want to add your collection to it. I have now come to the end of my video here. If you have any questions, do put them in a comment below and I try my best to answer them according to my experience. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Take care. Bye.